I like you guys. I perform here every Thursday. You guys are really nice. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. <laughs> what is going on? Woo! Are you go you guys coming from work or some shit? Like what 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 is the story? You drunk? Hi, what 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 is it? How do you know each other? We're escaped from school. You escaped from school? That is the lamest shit ever. We escaped. Escaping from school is just them letting you go. <laughs> you, unless you went to some type of training camp that Sweden has, I don't know about. We keep the teacher as well. Oh, she's a teacher. What do you teach? Miss. Mrs. Miss, oh, she's Mrs., I'm sorry. Yeah, Mrs. She's like, yeah, Mrs., I'm taking mm -hmm. All right. All right, girlfriend. Yeah, Mrs. He liked it, so he put a ring on it. Hey, all right. Hey, you know, respect the game, not the player. All right. All right, Mrs., what do you teach? I teach these guys. What do you teach them? Whoa, all right. Google Translate. What what is that for the layman? For the person who just moved here a year ago. Outdoor education. I heard outdoor pedophiles. <laughs> That's what I. Outdoor pedophilism. I was like, what is? Outdoor education. Outdoor education. So like just gym class. <laughs> no. Or what, no. What? Surviving in the wilderness, creating stuff. That's how <laughs> Surviving in the world. Okay, so you're making like little like MacGyvers, but like, yes, yes. Oh, right, cool, 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 cool. Like, you know, if like you're lost and there's a bear or some shit, you know how to kill the bear and then use it as a coat and then, yeah, and then like you make the bear into a car or some shit. Like, all right, cool, man. So, 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 like, so, like, if everything crashes, you guys know what to do, right? Like, like if everything just goes to shit, you're like, I have my knife and twine and evaporated milk. <laughs> I'd be fucked up if, like, the world came to an end because there would be, like, no lactose-free products. <laughs> I would be so fucked up, I'd just be like, oh, I can't eat that, man. I'll just, I'll shit all over your couch. Trust me, it's not gonna be good. Just let me die here. <laughs> It'd be so bad, like, your stomach is gonna be the end of you, you know, I love you. But seriously, man, your lactose here, like you, you sprinkle lactose in everything. It's like white people hot sauce. Like I'll have a, I'll have a salad, and I'll be like, what was in that salad? And he's like, there was cheese on it. I didn't see the cheese. <laughs> All I'm saying is, some people see a tasty cheese omelet as breakfast. I see it as a biological attack in the bedroom. So just, my friend's like, what did you eat? I'm like, what did you cook? Vicious cycle. All right, you guys ready for your next comic? Right front table, I'll do it, I like it. This next guy coming to the mic is his first time at the mic, and this is my first time meeting him, so please give a big Ben International w uh, welcome to Omid Kal uh, Kamali, everybody. Let him hear Thank you, guys, thank you. Oh, my Iraqi friend, where are you? You just fucked up for tonight, man. You just, you just, don't worry. I'm gonna fuck it up too. It, it, it's my third time up on the stage. And uh, I have to test something before I start. Can everybody see me when I'm standing here? Yes! Over here? Yes! Over here? Yes! What a fucking idiot. Because I was up on the stage in Oslo. And it was a very small stage in two meter. And I went up and first he introduced me wrong. He said, the, the next guy, Hans And I went up, hey man, I'm not Swedish. I'm, I'm, I'm 169. In Sweden, you are 169, then you are nine. Come on, man. He said, I'm not Swedish, what the fuck, I'm Iranian. It's like a Swedish guy go up. And he introduced me, this guy from Somalia! No, oh, no, Swedish, Swedish. So I start to do some jokes in, uh, in Oslo, and they, they didn't understand. So when I was standing in the middle of the, the two meter uh, stage, or I call it a cage, the two meter is nothing. Then I couldn't see because of the light. I don't know who was the light master for the night. The carpenter, because I'm a carpenter and scaffolder. I do stage myself. So I was standing there and I couldn't see the crowd. So I did the uh, one, one step to the left. 
Then I, I, I continue my show, look at the crowd, and when my show was over, I went down, and the next comedian, he said, you were hiding. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, man? It's two meters, where, where I could hide. He said, no, 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 we couldn't see you. It was a beam of light in the middle of the stage. I said, what the fuck, man, shit. How the hell you can have a bean of light in two meters? And I didn't know about it. I'm not Mr. Bean. Why the hell you put the middle of uh, in the stage? And I was standing to the left. Then I was outside my own show. So nobody could see me. But, um, okay, it, it, it's, it's good to be back. I have been in, uh, in Oslo for 10 years. It's good to be back to Stockholm. Uh, Stockholm City. I love Stockholm City. I, I have a nickname for Stockholm City. I call it for Bot City. The city of bots, because there's so many bots here, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. When you're walking in the street, shit, you, you can't get a whiplash. Look over there, oh shit. It's, uh, you know, even if you go to Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro, you don't see these bots, man. And what's up with these fitness uh, pants? Come on, girls. You know, because I was training uh, in the 80s, in the 90s, I was personal trainer, and, uh, and the girls, I remember in the 90s, if you want to see a girl in the fitness pants, you have to kill her first and put the pants on her. But now the girls, they have these fitness pants when they go eat shish kebab with rice. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And we are walking in the street, seeing these pants, it's a uh, shit, man. It's too much. It's too much. If you like butt, you come to Stockholm after a week, you love butt. I'm a botman now. Yeah. I'm a botman for sure. Yeah. Okay, I love botman. I love, I love it. I love it. Give me more botman. I'm, I, I, like, I'm addicted to bots. You know, I get sad. I just go to the street, to the test central and see some bots. They cheer me up, man. The Swedish bot. It's unbelievable. Oh, man. I just lost my face. I, I told you I will fuck up too, man. I told you. It's difficult. Of, uh, okay, uh, uh, you have um, somebody is in uh, Badu. Badu. How many? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm in Badu too. Looking for a bot. <laughs> I don't see the bots there, but I do. Uh, I remember I was I was drunk one night, and uh, I, I was looking uh, uh, in the uh, in the Badu. And I see one beautiful, beautiful blonde, and I start to write to this girl. I wrote, I think I'm in love. And I saw the name, it was Daniela. In the morning when I woke up, I look at this picture and I see Daniela, and it was after the name, a big T and a big S. I thought it was a state in, a, in Italy. I don't know. But after that, I saw, shit, it's a transsexual. <laughs> Come on, it's a short term for ladyboy, man. I know the ladyboys. I have been in Thailand for four years. But come on, transsexual. Okay, guys, I I'm done for tonight, man. Thank you, thank you. Let him hear it one more time. Omir Kamali, everybody. Let him hear it. What is up, man? I love the action, dude. I love your action, man. Your action was like having me like Cause for the first for the first two minutes, I'm like, why does this dude love buses so much? He's like, oh, he's, on, he's a bus. I'm like, oh yeah, I can get on board with that. I can get on board with bus. I, I like a, I like a girl. My girl, she got she got a nice butt, man. She 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 trying to lose weight, <laughs> and I'm like, no, don't. I don't know. I don't like skinny bitches, man. I don't like I don't like a chick that's too skinny. Like if like if it looks like you hit your head against like the you know if, if, if we're having sex like I can't have sex I can't I can't have sex with a chick that if it looks like if she hits her head against my headboard she's gonna pass out like I need a sturdy. You ain't even feeling me on that. That's all right. Next comic coming to the stage. It's also a uh, first time here at the mic. Uh, so please give another war uh, warm welcome to the very, uh, the very funny Fedrik Losnitz, everybody. Fedrik Losnitz, let him hear it. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm just going to... Um, um, hey everybody, wow, those are strong lights. Um, I was just uh, up in the bathroom and um, 
I saw a number on the wall that uh, said escort and uh, phone number, and uh, it was uh, smudged out, uh, so I mean, you really couldn't see the last th three uh, digits. Uh, but uh, I think it said, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, phone numbers in, in America, they have like 555 doctor. And I, I thought it said like HIV. So that would be just fucking terrible marketing if you're a prostitute, like HIV in your phone number. Well, um, well, it's so strong. Sorry, um, I'm, I'm really pale, so I'm, I don't want to get a tan. Um, but what I really want to talk to you about is time travel. Um, yeah, yeah, because um, the thing is with time travel, every time you talk about time travel with someone, it's always, um, oh, oh, it, oh, yeah, I'm here, and then, oh, sorry. Um, every time you talk about time travel, it's two options. It's either you go back in time and you play the lottery, you know, um, buy some Microsoft stock. Smart. Uh, that and you go back in time and kill Hitler. Because that's what we do in uh, our society. We go back and kill him. I'm not going to go on a racist rant like, uh, he was pretty all right. No, he wasn't. He was a fucking asshole. And everyone should go back in time and kill him. But the thing is that there were like over 40 attempts on his life uh, by people with he, you know, great military skills. And if I would go back in time, you know, kind of fat, um, no military skills whatsoever, these outdoors kids could probably pull it off, but I couldn't. And, you know, you know, he, he, you know, even his own guys try to kill him. You know, his own generals try to kill him. And, you know, Nazis were great at killing people. They were, you know, fucking aces at killing people. But even they couldn't do it. So my idea, what I would do is, I would uh, go back in time and I would dress up as Ava Brown, his mistress. And, you know, dress up like her and, uh, you know, gain his trust, work my way into a circle of friends, and just, you know, um, hang out at parties like, hey, how are you doing? And he would be like, nice girl? Who's that? Oh, that's Ava Brown. That's his Ava Brown, which is uh, hot. And I would be like, you know, getting close to him. And uh, then I would probably, uh, I would probably have to sleep with him, though, to gain his trust. You know, to gain his trust, you know, to, you know, get into really, you know, his circle of, uh, you know, commitment, you know, to, to, you know, in order to get him alone in a room so I can be close enough to him to, you know, stab him in the neck with a pen. And, um, and that's the thing, you, you ask yourself, would I be able to do that? Would I be able to have sex with the worst racist in human history? Um, you know, it's, it's a, you know, you have to ask yourself, would it be worth that? But, um, man, I, I've been single for a long time now, and I, I really am at a place in my life where I, I really need to evaluate all options thrown at me. And, and, you know, it's been a really long time, and I, I you know, uh, it's, it's um, yeah, it's hard. So, so, you know, if that means I have to, you know, be violently made love to by Adolf Hitler, well, that, then I would have to do that, you know. And, uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, I would do that for history. But, um, you know, um, a lot of you are thinking, why don't you just go back in time further and kill him as a kid? And, or even better, kill his dad, wipe out the fucking bloodline, and be done with it. Well, as I said, I have been single for a long time, and I really need to value all my options. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Peter Gerstens. Thank you. Bingo uh, team for Frederick Losnitz, everybody. Let him hear it. The people going for your next comment coming to the mic, who has been doing comedy. He's been doing comedy for a while. <laughs> and without further ado, please uh, put your hands together for the very funny Carl Axel Bjorn Birdie, everybody. Let him hear it. Hi, kids. Hi, kids. I'm, I'm Carl Axel Bjorn Birdie. I'm the funniest French here in Sweden. <laughs> Now, are so many Hitchin 
best is Sweden. Millions of them. Oh, millions of them. But I am the best. I am the saddest. Yes. <laughs> I need to ask you if you are, are, are well tonight. I see your eyes shining. You are, you are waiting for me to uh, tell him a lot of funny jokes, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am, am angry. There are so many technical terms now. What the fuck is DHS, DVD, SMS, PCLWC? What is it? Speak it, speak Swedish or speak English. I don't understand nothing. <laughs> yes. My brother, I got a brother, he is, is not quite right in his head. He doesn't understand how television works. Do you? <laughs> I, I invited him to, to my place uh, and we watched a horror film. There was a man carrying a um, chainsaw and he threatened he said to people, if you don't give me money, I'll cut your heads. And my brother, he was scared. Stop him, kill him, he's not... And afterwards, suddenly he, he turned off the TV and ran away. And then after that time, Sam, he put on the TV again. What have, where have you been? I've been to the Lua, uh, to the to toilet. Why were you away so long time? I had to 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 ha 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 hide my my wallet. He could take my money. That's, don't you understand? Did you think it was live on TV? Yes. Are you are you stupid? Yes. <laughs> Never say that you're stupid. Um, do you exercise a lot here? You walk yes, around, yes, you know, yes, yes. to stay, to stay uh, fresh and uh, become stronger. I, I and some hags and dirty old men, we walk around in, on just the mound. <laughs> round and round, and what we call, call uh, 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 it is an uh, antique round. <laughs> on a racing disco. You know what the racing disco is? People who look like they have racing on their faces. Hence <laughs> and, uh, and we go to Golden Hills in Kuskot now for mature youth, 65 plus. And, uh, we, and uh, we have a lot of time there. A very funny time. Uh, why do I want to go out and, and pick up girls? I want to li live the uh, uh, life. I want to live a single life. But I want a woman. But I have problems with women. The women I want, they don't want me. But the women that, that don't want me, that uh, I don't want, they don't want me either. Jag vill leva la dolce vita. Jag vill leva la dolce vita. I'm a man boy, man boy, you can call me man boy. We'll be popular, I will be popular. popular. My body wants you, girl. My body wants you. Thank you very much. Thank you. One more time for Carl Axel Young Bad, everybody. Looks like you got some fans, man. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, I deal with a lot of people like uh, Carl Axel uh, at that particular a lot of pensioners and uh, they always surprise me because there's this one lady who comes in and she always her voice does, doesn't match like the way she looks she's this really sweet old lady and she always has like this little wagon with all her like you know apotheket stuff and all like little groceries and she sounds like a really like she sounds like 
She sounds like, I don't know, like Mother Goose. I don't know how you guys, you guys have Mother Goose or like, no, who, who do you guys have that's like a mother that sounds really nice? Pretty Polly, I, I don't know, I don't watch enough uh, TV. But anytime she talks, like she's like, It's like, oh, the lady there, but the taxi back in. She sounds like you, sounds like you need an exorcism, man. Were you the girl from the, from the, for the exorcist? She's always like looking for how some things. She's like, oh, is Okay, that's as far as that act out gets me. That's, that's okay. I want to be old though, man. I, I want to be old because the old people that walk into that for ticket, like they don't, they just don't give a fuck. Like there was this one dude who was on the line, and uh, I have like about three lines. I, I can spend, Scott, man. I don't. I can speak Swedish, but I don't speak Swedish to other people because anytime I speak Swedish, I sound guilty, and I don't like. I don't like that. People are like, hey, yeah, who the log? Oh, the bro, the bro. It's like, what are you? Like? <laughs> Why are your hands in your pockets? Like, what are you about to do? <laughs> but it's like this, this is one old dude on the line, and like, this happened last week, and like, uh, Sweden's just a weird country when it comes to social nuance. Like, you guys just deal with anything. This dude was on the line, and he was like, uh, I was like, oh, so, uh, uh, what a bra saw? Oh, yeah, the bra, the bra. Okay, the cost that 290 attack. Oh, I'll just stay, just stay. Oh, yeah, yeah, talk. Oh, what the? I'm like, <laughs> all right, do you excuse yourself? Like, and like, no one in the line did the, come on, brother, like, come on, you can't just be farting in front of me, my kids are here, like, Swedish people are just like, hurry up, hurry up, I'm next. <laughs> I'm walking through his fart cloud, like, smelling like bran flakes and brooms, who knows, man. <laughs> Old people, man, I, I want to be old. This one old lady, she had one of them little go karts that old people have, like them little rascals. And uh, she was like, she was, she was like playing Mario Kart or some shit. She was on her own little world, going through the little aisles and everything, like, banana, 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 like hitting the pads and shit. And then I guess her battery ran out, and she was just like in the middle of the of the apotheque, and she's like, "Bring a man taxi." I'm just like. Who is this bitch talking to? Like she has her own taxi, like and like all oh, like the people I work with, like, is she talking to us? She's like, bring me a taxi, and I guess when you're old and you just say shit, people gotta do it. Cause showing up, I was like, do, do you need a taxi? He's like, yes, 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 I need a taxi. And then the taxi guy got there. He's like, what do you want me to do? She has her own cab. <laughs> Give her a boost. I don't know man, how it works. Man. <laughs> But anyway, uh, speaking of taxis, this next guy is not a taxi, but uh, he's a friend of the mic who performs here all the time. He's been on Raw, he's been on Nora Broom, and he's one of uh, Sweden's next star like hottest comics. He is, he was dubbed actually the Cat Williams of Sweden, so please, without further ado, give it up for the very funny, my homie, Ahmed Beran, everybody, let him hear it. This light, I feel guilty. Yes. <laughs> do you plead guilty? I do. <laughs> what up? I know there's people in here because I saw you earlier, so. <laughs> Just go. Fuck. Dude. I'm sorry, I have weak eyes. It's 10 years of cannabis consumption. Just. <laughs> makes me kind of light sensitive. <laughs> Because I remember the, like, the first time I saw Carl Axel, I was like, oh my god, Mr. Burns alive. It's... I want you to autograph and I want you to say excellent. <laughs> Instagram and this shit. Uh, but if I actually used to work at an old folks house uh, at home, I used to be like, I used to do the night shift, which is great because you don't do that much. It's like being a drug dealer to old people. So they call me, they're like, I want my medicine. I'm like, I'm sorry, I took it. It's... <laughs> I'm gonna be here all night as well, you know, just sharing is caring, now go back to sleep or die, just <laughs> make me put a pillow on your face, <laughs> again, <laughs> yes, I worked with Prema, it was, <laughs> we had good times, it was happy, mm. but it's nice, it's, it's fucking summertime, I like it, I'm happy, because uh, I like, you know, any, if you've seen my stand-up before, like, I'm the most Swedish comedian you can ever see, because, all I speak about is the weather. 
<laughs> so pretty much for eight months, all I talk about is how fucking cold it is. And then come summer and I talk about how much it rains. It's, <laughs> that's all I do the entire year. But, but I, I like the summer. It, it, it's cool, except for the rainy part, because it rains a lot here during the summer. It's a big problem for me, because I got dreads. So when it rains, I smell like wet dog for two weeks. <laughs> People come to my house, but do you have pets? I'm like, no, I'm just dirty, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I like summertime also because I realize out in Sweden, summertime is the only time you hear everybody, like literally everybody acts like a junkie and it's okay. Because like, it's only during summertime you can see like a middle-aged white man just lay down on the grass 1 p.m. in the afternoon drinking beer. He's like, aren't you going to work? He's like, fuck it! Sule and Fina. I'm not fucking with that homie, you're right. Let me say next to you. <laughs> He's drunk, my eyes red, we just <laughs> both got allergies. <laughs> but, uh, but there is things that disturb me during the summer. Like one thing that I really hate out, out here during the summer is like people don't know how to act, people don't have manners. Like you're not allowed to have your sunglasses on wherever you are. You can have your sunglasses outside. Not inside. That's just retarded. It pisses me off, literally. I hate seeing people with sunglasses indoors. What's wrong with you? Hangover. Fuck hangover. This is. I saw four. I was at the club last weekend. I saw four people at the bar. This is inside of the club with sunglasses on. It looked like Ryanair had an after work. It's just. And I know it was Ryanair because it was trying to hassle with the price at the bar. They were like, "We bought our own glasses. Can we just?" We got ice in the bag. Let me pay half off. It's just. Thank you, Yemi. Yes. It's true. Black people do support each other. I don't need you. <laughs> but no, it, like, it really gets to my mind. Like Even like when you ride on the subway, I hate when I see people on the subways with their sunglasses on. I think that's really what like Contralante should really do. They should just like walk up and down the subway and just check if people got sunglasses on. And if they do, they just like get on their mic and be like, yeah, we got a motherfucker with sunglasses on inside. <laughs> yeah, I know I hate him too. Could somebody come here and spit him in the face, please? Just handle the situation. Because I don't, I don't know, maybe some of you think, well, isn't it a little bit harsh spitting people in the face? I'm like, no, they fucking deserve it. Unless they're blind. <laughs> then it will be kind of awkward spitting them in the face. Like, wait! <laughs> and he's like, why would you do that? And it's just, I'm sorry. We also kicked your dog out, so. <laughs> Shouldn't be fucking around in public transportation. <laughs> Like going public transportation is like around like a couple of months ago, like the police started this thing called Operation Reva, which I think is hilarious because like I don't know how you how you get ideas like that. Like, I smoke a lot, but not even I can create something that stupid. <laughs> and I create stupid things all the time. Like everybody here knows. Oh, yeah, of course you know. It's, maybe you just don't give a fuck. It's okay. It's an immigrant problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yes it is, it's, <laughs> it doesn't concern us at all. But it feels like, you know, I don't understand, like, how do you get that idea? Like, it feels like somebody at the police station was like, you know these paperless immigrants, they have a tendency to disappear underground, and then another cop was like, now we follow them, all the way down to the subway. Because <laughs> like, you know, I'm 28 years old, I'm born and raised in this country, can't nobody ask me where I'm from, like, I'm Swedish, and I don't know what to do, like, am I supposed to, like, whistle the national anthem on the subway, all the way from Bolsa to Tays and Thomas, and nobody will bother me? <laughs> I'm just sitting there on the train, like, <laughs> Trying to get eye contact with a sweet just to make sure I'm singing this right song. And, you know, we gotta, we gotta think about like the signals that we're sending to other countries. Could you imagine like the immigrant that get deported because of Operation Day of Like that's what's the first thing he gonna say when he comes back. He's like, hey, whatever you do in Sweden, don't pluck up. They take that shit very seriously. <laughs> And then, you know, it's, it's hard, like, it's expensive. Public transportation is expensive nowadays. Like, even, like, when you do, like, with the SMS ticket. Like, I'll tell you like this, whenever I send a text, like, for the tickets, it doesn't matter if I'm just going two stops or, like, to the other side of town. I'm riding the entire hour out. Like, I'm not, no, I'm not kidding. I've been sitting on the train and my friend's like, aren't you supposed to get off here? I'm like, dude, I still got 45 minutes on this ticket. I'm going, I'm going to Hessel B. Tell him I'll be late. <laughs> this is fucking expensive. You're like, yeah. So, no, yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> the music's fun. <laughs> no, cause, I, I, used, I used to like music, but I don't know what happened to music, because like, the other day I saw a clip of this boy band called One Direction doing Backstreet Boys covers. Yeah. And for me, that's a little bit like AIDS singing about cancer, and I just... <laughs> I mean, and I, and I, 
like I hate it. Like you know, you know, we recently had the Eurovision. I hate the Eurovision. I don't understand how people can like Eurovision. It makes no sense to me. Why? <laughs> no, why you? Why? Why do you listen to that shit? Like Eurovision don't make any. Like Eurovision is the only time where I wish that the United States would intervene. Where I'm just sitting at home. Come here with your democracy and stop this bullshit. It's, is bullshit because it's the only international like event that has no terror threats. None. <laughs> like the Olympics last year, the UK was fucking putting up tomahawk missiles at the roof of like people's buildings because they were like the terrorist threat is imminent. I don't even know what imminent means, but I'm guessing it's serious. Because <laughs> they had missiles on the roof. <laughs> but it's like when it comes to the Eurovision, I think even the Taliban's realized they're like, you know what? We'll create more damage if we just let it go. Just <laughs> Just let it play out. Like, did you not see Lithuania's contribution? They're over, they're done. It's, it's like they realize themselves, there's like there's no explosive in the world that can remove all that glitter at once. Because well, yeah. the thing is like about music, I don't know if you know this, but like, you know, we hear shit like with the air, but like music is like interpreted in the brain. So like it's your brain that tells you like, there's a sound and this house, it sounds good. Uh -huh. I don't know what it says, ha ha. But my brain is semi gay, so it goes, ha ha. <laughs> but so, like, it's in your brain. Your brain interprets music for you. So, which literally means that if you like Schlager, you are retarded. You're allowed to park at a handicapped spot. You don't even need that little plate. You just put a Carola album in the front and you're sick. Anyways, my name is Ahmed Brown, and I'm out. Thank you. right back after this with more stand-up comedy. Cheers! <laughs> Big Ben International uh, Stand-Up Comedy Night. We're back in business. I hope everybody had a good break. Please give it up for the first half of all the awesome comics you saw here tonight. It was good. It was great. Okay, uh... Ahmed was talking about, uh, terrorism earlier and, uh... Did, did, was he talking about terrorism, or is this just a joke that I'm trying to put in? <laughs> what? <laughs> how, how you guys doing here? You guys any, save, any, save any lives outside? <laughs> so, can you just give me a situ- like, give me a skill that you have that would be vital if you were outside and say, like, uh, you were lost in, I don't know. Making coffee. <laughs> so, alright, so tell me, how do you make coffee without any coffee beans? Electricity. But, but dude, you always have coffee. That's the spiral of water. What? Is it, is, it, is, it like, is, it, is it like the stereotype Swedes always have coffee in their pocket? Like black people, like black people always have cocaine on them? Is that? I've never heard that stereotype before. Swedes always have coffee in the pocket. So. No, no, no. It's to bribe the teachers. It's to bribe the teachers? What is it? Fucking gold or some shit? I have some coffee for you. And let them sleep, eh? And he just like blow it in the face. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Dude, coffee is black gold. Oh, well, okay. Coffee is black gold. I mean, shit, I get mine for 40 kroner from the guy with the car with the hot dogs. But you need to talk to him, man. He should be upselling that shit. Cool, man. I'm from New York, so we don't, like, there is no really, like, besides uh, Central Park, there is no, like, uh, there's no, there's no outdoors really. It's just, it's just, it's just like subways, homeless people dancing. You see, a, you see a lot, of, you see a lot of pigeons though. There's a little, a lot of wildlife, a lot of pigeons, stray cats. Well, big rats that look like as big as stray cats. I don't know. Uh, but what was I talking? What is that? It's like they're trying to beat me up. Yeah, turn off my phone. Somebody's trying to blow me up. There's always somebody asking me for shit. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I was talking about terrorism earlier. This is the weirdest fucking hosting I've ever done. Uh, and he, uh, I remember saying something about uh, being an uh, immigrant and being terrorist and being pigeonholed. And uh, I like the fact that Sweden doesn't really have to, like he was talking about the, the whatever, the, what is it called? The, uh, the Eurovision song contest. Uh, nobody called in for that. I don't know why he's so excited about that. I learned 
a lot about other countries that didn't exist before the show because me and my lady watched it, but other than that, it was just like, you know, whatever. But yeah, he was talking about how terrorism didn't really, like, you know, no one called in and they called in last year at the Olympics or whatever. And uh, I like the fact that you can live in a country like this and not really worry about that because in Boston, you guys heard about that like three months ago. Like, the marathon was bombed and, like, you know, a couple people died. And I thought that was, like, messed up because here, like, it'd be hard to be a terrorist here because at the. What the fuck, dude? Whose phone is that? That shit is fuck. See, that's why we all gonna get brain cancer, man. That's fucking funny shit. This is a bam, bam, bam. Is that my phone? No, it's off. It's off, huh? It's off. Is that your phone? <laughs> Who, whose phone is this? Everybody turn off your phones. God damn it, this shit is fucking with me, man. It's like an annoying fucking bug or some shit. So anyway, what I was saying. Terrorism wouldn't happen in Sweden because Swedes are entirely too honest. You're too honest and you're too polite. Those are two bad combinations because as a terrorist, what's the main thing you got to do? You got to leave shit in public. You got to leave bags in places, you know what I mean? And like, it'd be hard to be like whatever, Mohammed Abdu Dubai or something, and he's like at the Orlando airport and he's just like, okay, I have the, the eagle and the eagle have has left the nest. And then he'd put his bag down and then he'd walk away like five meters. And not even like after 30 seconds, you would hear and see a Swedish person like, oh, you forgot your bag, sir. You forgot your bag. Yeah, no, this is your bag. I just saw you. You dropped it. Yes, wash your door. Got it wrong. You wouldn't be able to leave shit. It took way too long. It took way too long for that joke to happen. Jesus Christ. And then you'd just be like, you know, at the Al-Qaeda base, like, Hey, what's Mohammed? What happened? You're supposed to blow up Orlando. I don't know, this uh, nice Swedish lady. She went through my purse. <laughs> what can I say? It's really nice. Alright, you guys ready for your next comic? <laughs> Keep that energy going for your next comic. She uh, has, uh, she's on the radio uh, every morning on, on P3, and she's actually on um, this uh, show on Canal Them called Part Parte, I think I'm saying that right, and uh, this is her first time here at the International Night, so please give a Big Ben International welcome to the very lovely Josephine Johansson, everybody! Let her hear it. Oh, feather boa! 
the most appropriate garment. That's what I'm wearing. I love all the reality Do you love reality shows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of us. Some of us. Uh, I love that they always go, like in the end, with the yeah. wrong way to follow all these. Uh, the people always go when they voted off saying, well, this isn't the last you'll see of me. <laughs> and then it is! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? No, not talking to me. Okay. Uh, prison, huh? <laughs> yeah. How many has been to prison here? No, not all, sir. That's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, good for you. <laughs> no, I, I've never been to prison. Uh, I've, I've uh, read. What? <laughs> You're having a good time as well, by the way. I've seen in movies that in prison is like that. When people go um, being released from uh, from prison or jail or that, they always get uh, picked up by a friend in a car, right? Yes. These are going like, hi, hi, what's up? Okay. Had a good time? In jail? No? Okay. Usually there's a better, better script in the movie than that. Uh, unless it's a movie by Colin Utley. Hey! Thank you. Very good comment. Top, top comment. No, but I was thinking, why is that? Why is that they always get picked up by a friend in a car? Is it that they don't have parking spaces? And man, prison could really cash in on a long-term car park. <laughs> Right? Yeah, you with me? Yeah, going hi, hi, I like to park, welcome, yes, uh, for how long? Uh, four to six years. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, six years, depending on uh, depending on, on whether they discover my drug cartel or not. <laughs> so that's what they do. Okay, yeah, I, I realize also this is not a good idea because there are going to be some, some issues with it, uh, especially if someone like double parks. Uh, they can't go out going, yeah, no, you know, uh, traffic warden, I was just in five minutes. Four years. Yeah, four years, right, yeah. Uh, four short years, four, four leap years. Leap years doesn't work that we do. No, right, okay, no uh, long term car park then. Right, uh, we'll instead have, okay, yeah, better idea, better idea. You sell cars outside of prison. Better idea. Locked up, they can trade in their car and then they will get out. They buy a new one, yeah! yeah. Not a new one, I mean, like 2003, something like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Not gonna work either, right. Because the car dealer is also always a crook. There was uh, some satire my dad wanted to have in the show. So I put that in. Woo! <laughs> No, sorry, your one isn't coming, but uh, I'll tell him that you liked it. <laughs> Edible underwear. <laughs> yeah, really good links now. I really, really love my links here. No, edible underwear. Do you uh, do you know that there's such a thing as edible underwear? Yeah. yeah. These go. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. You're wearing it as we speak. <laughs> okay. Uh, edible underwear is uh, either they're made of uh, underwear made of like candy so on a string or very tasty paper. Uh, I don't know why edible underwear exists. I can't, it's never happened to me. I wish it would happen to me that I uh, brought someone home that's so keen on um, 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 snogging the JG. <laughs> So there isn't time to just pull off the panties, so he rather just eat his way through underwear. <laughs> Love for that to happen. <laughs> it hasn't. No. <laughs> oh, it's alright. Don't, don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> no, I mean, um, how full do you get by eating uh, these, uh, these uh, underwear? <laughs> I mean, should you come hungry? <laughs> it's a meeting! It's a meeting! Yeah! Come hungry, no. Oh, hi! Oh, there you go! Hey! Welcome to the show! Wow, are we one? <laughs> no, I mean, um, you, you must be really, really hungry if you'd rather eat 
someone's own brief <laughs> rather than just do like a Varma Coppa. <laughs> it takes one minute to just stir that up. And also, there's a difference between eating just like a tiny, tiny G-string or a pair of boxers. <laughs> That's an entire meal with a side order of, of, of a pair of stockings. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What did you say? More dirty jokes? All right, more dirty jokes it is. I'm just gonna. I'm sorry, you're welcome. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not gonna talk for much longer. I'm just gonna give you a little, little thought I have. Um, uh, the uh, position 69. Yeah, one of the dear, are you familiar with this 69? All for it. Or do we have to bring someone up to just demonstrate? <laughs> no, 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 you want it? Is it prison guy as well? I don't, I don't. <laughs> oh, again, standing over here. <laughs> okay. Right, 69, you all know anything about everything about it. Uh, for those who didn't uh, have the courage to, uh, to tell that they know it. Okay, 69 is like this. Uh, you lay down as someone, anyone. You don't do it with just anyone. <laughs> That's not my thing. But you lay down uh, on the, not the ground, some, a surface of some sort, uh, and uh, being the six, and then another person comes uh, on top of you, uh, upside down, being the nine. And then you just nibble away. <laughs> I don't know what I'm Forget that now. Go like, uh, that, that's all right. Has anyone got a clear picture of the 69? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to go home and try it? Don't know. Yeah. No, no, don't listen. If you do, bring the prison guy, because he really seems like it. He really wants to go. So that's okay. Um, right, 69. My thought about the 69. Here it goes. What did the position 69 look like before we had our normal figures, our numbers, like when we had the Roman figures? Okay, you with me? The Roman numerals, yeah? Did you have to go like being one that was the I and the other one was the X? That was like the 69. Because if you write if you write out uh, the 69 in Roman Roman numerals, it goes L X I X. <laughs> Dibs not being the L. Hey guys, guys, can I, can I be? I wanna be. Can I be? Can I be? Can I be? I wanna be. Can I be? I want. I want. I'm not gonna be. In. Okay. You also have to watch it if you're out on the pub uh, and someone goes up to you going. Um, Hi, yeah, um, fancy going home for a 69? Absolutely. Um, uh, quick question. Which numeric system do you use? He says, binary. What? Binary? Oh, quick Google. What 69 is binary? Going, okay, that's 100101. Zero, 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 one, zero, one. <laughs> It's going to be seven of us. <laughs> right. We can't just do like um, the 69 digitally. Well, how is the 69 digitally? A pocket calculator up the bum. <laughs> yeah, that was it. So guys, that was all I had. Uh, this is the last, not the last you'll see of me. Yes, it is, it is the last you'll see. Thank you very much. Everybody. Is anybody into role playing games here with their spouse, partner, yes. you? you? What do you play? Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's funny. The school we try to teach works as well. Oh, okay. The school we're a teacher. Uh, me and my girl play one. Uh, it's called uh, Parolee and Parole Officer. Um, half the time I don't know we're playing, but I come home drunk and she's like. Have you, have you done drugs? And I'm just like, I don't know, officer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, next time we come to the stage, uh, this guy performs all around uh, Sweden, all around town. He's been on Raw Norbrun and literally has done comedy around the world. It's always a pleasure to see him and uh, see him go up. So please, without further ado, give it up for the very funny, the very talented Isaac Johnson, everybody. Let him hear it. <laughs> It's a really weird uh, 
uh, kind of feeling tonight, isn't it? It's great. I love coming down here to Big Ben. It's a free comedy night that people have expectations. I love that. There's <laughs> always someone in the back going, yeah, this is shit now. It's a fucking shit. I mean, it's a free comedy show. It's really weird to have expectations on something that's free. It's like finding a sandwich on the street and going, man, there's no mayonnaise on this thing. <laughs> It's just weird. You guys are though, a nice audience. Um, uh, I, I like that. It's, the thing is, is, my job gets a lot easier if it's a nice audience. I mean, like, like in December last year, there was this uh, rookie comedian doing comedy for the first time here on Big Ben. And in the middle of his gig, he forgot what he was going to say. So he stood there on stage, and you could see how he's getting more and more nervous, and just how sweat was pouring down his forehead. And he was like, <laughs> I, I, I can't do this. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't do this. And he just started walking off the stage. But it was so great, because the audience was like you guys, like a supportive, nice audience. So everyone started going, you can do it, come on! Get back up there, come on! You can do it, come on! And it was so great, because he actually turned, he went back up on stage and finished the gig. I thought that was a nice thing. Nice thing. On, the same, on the same note, I have to say I'm quite happy that only happens in stand-up comedy. <laughs> and not in other occupations. <laughs> like for airplane pilots. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Captain Anderson of Flight 693. Uh, I can't do this. <laughs> It doesn't matter if we die, just go! <laughs> I was in uh, Germany doing uh, stand-up comedy for, for a while ago, it was, it was great, yeah. I, I think uh, German, in different languages, if you don't know the language, it sounds different. Like, if you, like German is very authoritative, you know, Raus! And uh, <laughs> French is very, you know, sexy. <laughs> Swedish, on the other hand, is only funny. That's the only thing it is. Everyone that doesn't know Swedish and hears Swedish, we sound like the uh, chef from the Muppet Show. That's what we sound like. Everyone that hears us just like Spur -burdy, Spur -burdy, Spur -burdy, Spur -burdy, Spur -burdy. I think that's why we're neutral. Because there's no way we can invade a country going Spur -burdy, Spur -burdy. Spur -burdy, Spur -burdy. I even think that's why Hitler left us alone during the Second World War. He's like, we will, we will keep them for entertainment. <laughs> I'm on, the, I have uh, Instagram. I don't know if you knew this. I didn't know this until I got Instagram. But apparently, there's a world going on right now outside of this room. I didn't know this until I got Instagram. I'm like, what? People are having parties and eating food? Wow! I didn't know that. Twitter is even worse though. Twitter is weird because uh, on Twitter, you have the whole world's problems solved on Twitter. Everyone has a solution. Like a friend of mine Twittered for a while ago. He's like, hey, North Korea, cut it out. <laughs> Like, the North Korean army is going to see them and go, Oh, apparently we shouldn't be doing this or whatever. I mean, it's just so stupid. Um, well, I, I, um, I find it interesting with, uh, like, different, like, subculture genres. Uh, because all subcultures try to be cool. But if you kind of break them down into small pieces, then they're not that cool. Like, like people that love heavy metal, they're supposed to be really cool and dangerous and scary. But really, they're not that scary. I mean... Like, for example, all like people that love heavy metal, they always shout out, like, METAL! METAL! <laughs> That's a material. <laughs> it's not that exciting, really. I mean, you can't yell out something out, like, PLYWOOD! <laughs> STYROFOAM! I mean, it's just... I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to like that joke. <laughs> Um, oh, another thing I find interesting is uh, people that um, 
people find, I, I find it interesting that, that 2013 today, that we, we still have this big discussion about what the word feminism means instead of trying to make society more equal between the sexes. I think that's quite weird. You always have that one person going, yeah, I don't like the word. I don't like the word. Like, what? It's just, it's just a word. Just use the word or don't use the word. Why do you... Why? I mean, I don't like the word anus. <laughs> I still use the word anus. I mean, I don't go to a doctor and like, uh, yeah, I'm hurting in my fart mine. I don't like... It's just stupid. The word. And it, it's always the same thing. You're like, you, you ask somebody, like, uh, but yeah, yeah, you know that there's differences between the, the sexes. Like, yeah. And you're against that. Yeah. And you're trying to do something to stop that. Yeah. Well, then you're a feminist. I am not a feminist. <laughs> they're like, well, it's like, it's like someone saying, yeah, I voted for the Democratic Party. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a member of the Democratic Party. Yeah, I'm related to Obama. So you're, to, to, to mark, you're part of the Democratic Party, and they're like, no, I'm a Nazi. And I mean, it's just, it's just weird. That's what I'm trying to say. I guess that is okay. I fucked up that joke. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I like it, though, that you're a supportive. You're like, just keep going. You can. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah you, yeah, you just repeated the joke I just did. That's great. In the front. Uh, I like it how it's kind of different because you people in the middle are really supportive, like really positive, and everyone else is just standing on the other one in front. I mean, I, the thing is, because I, you guys are so like positive. I think if you lived during like ancient Greece, you would have been the guards that let in the Trojan horse. That's how positive you guys are. Really? Why would the enemy build a statue? Oh, it's, they're just, they're just good losers. Come on. <laughs> uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave you with uh, uh, one last thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not religious, uh, which I don't know. If I, that, I'm, uh, the thing is this, the thing I don't like with, that I don't understand with religion is that um, God is quite a bad recruiter. Because like, if you read the, like the Bible and the old texts, they, like whatever God is gonna, like, appoint someone for a very important job on earth, he always chooses a shepherd. You know, like Abraham, Jake, all of them were shepherds. Why? I mean, there's so many other occupations that he could have chosen. I mean, I don't know if we have any shepherds here tonight, but you, you quite rarely need a shepherd. Like, you're ne it's never on an airplane you hear someone going, ah, do we have a doctor on board this plane? And someone's like, no, but I can make sheep get into a big round circle. <laughs> yeah, that'll do, just come on. I mean, it's, I, I, I want to be in heaven while God is taking these decisions. That would have been quite interesting, like like some angel standing around, okay, God, we're going to decide on who you're going to pull out your, you know, talk about your very important message on earth. Uh, have you thought about what kind of person we should recruit to this? It's like, yeah, sheep herder. <laughs> shepherd, yeah, we're going for shepherd. Okay, yeah, because, you know, we've been talking, we, the others here, and, um, we were thinking maybe something like a, um, maybe like someone that has experience working with people. <laughs> for this, this one job. No, we're definitely going for a shepherd. <laughs> shepherd. Yeah, because, but you, well, you see, last time we picked a shepherd, he kind of got a bit drunk and chopped off a piece of his penis. That wasn't really a part of our plan. Should we not choose someone? Is there no one else we can pick? <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll take my son. <laughs> yeah, carpenter, that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you guys have a great audience. My name is Isaac Hanson. Thank you very much. The very funny Isaac Johnson. One more time, everybody. Let him hear it. Two more comics. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Two very uh, funny uh, gentlemen coming to the stage. This next guy uh, has a 
room that he's running in uh, Lung Shop Bing, a uh, very nice uh, English man, and uh, he performs all around town. He's been on Raw, and uh, he's here to uh, make you giggle, make you laugh tonight. So please give it up for the very handsome, the very funny Ben Kersley, everybody. Let him hear it. Very handsome, eh? <laughs> very, you heard it from Yemi Afalabi. He's very handsome. Thank you. Some of you don't look like you agree 100 with Yemi, but uh, I'm with Yemi on that one. I'm very handsome. It's cool you're here, you're a good old gang of people, students, yeah? They always say there's two kinds of students. There's one kind of student, you see them and you say, fucking students. <laughs> then there's the other kind of students that you see them and you go, fucking drunk students. <laughs> It's cool you're here. I'm, just, I, I, I love the fact that you know, there's all these people, Swedish people, speaking English, Isaac, fantastic English, uh, Josephine, fantastic English, the audience, most of you are Swedish, you, uh, applaud if you're Swedish. I'm saying a one, a one woman Mexican wave just to prove she's Swedish. She's fantastic. But it's great, I think it's wonderful. For the non Swedes here, who is impressed that the level of English is so good here? That the Swedes understand English, that they can speak it? Applaud if you're impressed that the, the level of English is so good. Okay. For those people who are applauding, don't be impressed. Don't ever, ever be impressed with a Swedish person speaking or understanding English. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Let me tell you, English and Swedish are more or less the same language. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's pretty much the same language. Let me give you an example. Right, do you know somebody called Gordon Ramsay? You know Gordon Ramsay? Right, okay, Gordon Ramsay. Right. In Swedish, Gordon Ramsay is a TV cock. <laughs> In England, when we see him on the telly, we just say, it's that cock on the telly. <laughs> another example, another example. Sven Joran Eriksson, Senes, yeah, you know who he is, right? In Swedish, he is a svensk football's trainer, yeah? Okay? In England, when we see him, we just say, it's that Swedish cock on the telly. <laughs> Same language. Same language. In, in England, we've got Bob the Builder. In Sweden, we've got Brigitte Bob. In England, he says, can we fix it? In Sweden, he says, can we fika? <laughs> Same language. When I first came here, I thought, I don't need to learn Swedish. I don't know, why would I go out and learn Swedish? Swedish English is the same language, it's true. Think about it, hand means hand, arm means arm. And I survived for a long time with only English. It went very well, until I went into a shop to pay with a credit card, I was buying a pair of trousers, and I went up to the till to pay, and the lady behind the till, she said to me, have you got leg? <laughs> and I was like, no, of course I've got leg. Why would I be buying a pair of trousers if, if I didn't have any leg? It's not like I'm having a bra without any breasts. You know, and, then, and then I said, well, you know, I've got, I've got two legs. And she said, don't you know that it's illegal to have more than one leg in Sweden. <laughs> and then she said to me, can you show me your leg? <laughs> and I, I'm thinking this is a bit weird. <laughs> oh, I was a little bit shocked, I looked at it, and then I thought to myself, I thought to myself, maybe, maybe, and remember, Yemi said it, I'm a very handsome guy, maybe, Maybe she's flirting with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> but I thought to myself, if she's flirting with me, I shall flirt back. So I did my flirt face. Now look out. Look out now, you're, you, you're, in the, you're definitely in the danger zone. <laughs> that really worries me. <laughs> I did my flirt face. Metrosexual Sir I'm going to flirt with you. I did my flirt face, which looks a little bit like this. <laughs> so I said to her, I said, uh, I said, oh, give me the drinks. See, just the flirt face. And they go, like a fucking magnet. Look at this. Five seconds of flirt face. And I'm fucking fighting them off. I did my flirt face. And 
I said to her, I said to her, I will show you my leg if you show me yours. I was thrown out of the shop <laughs> without any trousers and after they'd thrown me out the, the guard, the, uh, the, the security guard was looking at me down there on the pavement and, and he explained to me that leg is a shortened version of the word legitimation legitimation, identification so I, I took out my driving licence and I, I showed him my name and he looked at it and my name is Ben which means... <laughs> You know, Swedish comedians doing comedy in English, and I thought I'm going to give something back. So I'm going to finish off tonight with one of your jokes, with a Swedish joke. Okay? Now, I want you to respect this joke. When it comes to the punchline, I want you to go crazy, not like, so probably crazy, not like stabbing, <laughs> murdering crazy. Not that kind of crazy. Fucking looks like it as well. Not that kind of crazy. When I get to the punchline, and I, I'd like you to sort of respect this joke as though we were down at Dramaten. So please, this is giving something back to you, a Swedish joke. Here we go. I've translated it to English. Shh, please. I need absolute silence for this joke. Something the rookies earlier managed without any problem. But shh, please, respect the joke. Ladies and gentlemen, a Swedish joke, get ready to go while well, I can. Two tomatoes. This is your joke. <laughs> I, I can only apologise to the rest of you. This, this is your this is your joke. This is a Swedish joke. This is this is me trying to blend in. This is me trying to fit in. Are you ready? Two tomatoes were crossing the road. One of the tomatoes was run over by a car. The second tomato Here he performs uh, all around uh, Sweden, all around Europe, and he runs a, a very nice room uh, in Manhattan, uh, New York Comedy Club, yeah? And 
and uh, yeah, and he frequents uh, Sweden because he loves it so much. So please, without further ado, give it up for your headliner of the night, the very funny Clayton Fletcher. Uh, my name is Clayton Fletcher. Uh, I've been coming to Sweden for four years, but uh, I live in New York City. Thank you. <laughs> it's very Swedish of you to just listen patiently while he cleans up the glass. All right, so uh, the first time I came here, okay, I was very nervous because. I didn't know how well you understand English. I was really worried that the audience was going to be lost. So I got up on stage, I was like, Hello! My name is Clayton! And they were like, That's nice to let a retarded guy perform here. <laughs> Came up to me after the show like, You were really good! Good job, little guy! Give me medals and hugs. <laughs> That's awkward. But now I learn, you know? I know. But the best thing about coming to Sweden is when I go back home, all my American friends ask me how Switzerland was. <laughs> I always like that, you know? Because I can say I have never been there. And they get confused, like, wait, wait, isn't that where you just were? I'm like, no, 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 that was Sweden. He's like, oh. <laughs> Aren't they the same? I said, yes. They're the same. Let's just talk about Kim Kardashian. Don't challenge them too much. I didn't know anything about Sweden myself. I knew it was different from Switzerland. And I knew what I read online, which was that Sweden was voted the easiest country in the world to have a threesome. And I found out that is true. I just didn't know it'd be with Lars and Jurgen. That was a surprise. It wasn't in the brochure. When it comes to Sweden, have a threesome. Oh wait. Oh yeah. When I do that joke in America, I then have to say those are boys' names. Okay. Yeah, make sure they keep up. <laughs> I love Sweden. I, li I like candy here. You know, you don't hear a lot about Swedish candy until you come to Sweden. You're like, yeah, they're proud of their candy. You know? and the kids only eat it on Saturdays. <laughs> I'm very strange in America because I love lacrys. You know, I love that taste. The black licorice, my favorite thing, man. It's so good. You know, but like most Americans hate it. Like when they bring us the jelly beans at Easter time. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, the American people don't eat the black jelly beans. I mean, oh, no, I hate that taste, but I love it. Like, I would eat all your black jelly beans. And I don't mean that the way it sounds. <laughs> they came out of my mouth wrong. Like, Girl, I would eat your jelly bean. No, I don't mean it. <laughs> Be careful. Anything can sound dirty if you say it wrong, you know. Girl, I'll drink your milkshake. What? <laughs> I mean, literally. There are a lot of females here tonight, and that's why we're having fun. I mean, seriously, you can't have a party without girls. But girls can have a party without boys. Yeah, some are doing it right now. A group of girls can go out and have the time of their lives. Girls night out! They have so much fun. Guys night out sucks. Guys night out is horrible. We just look at each other. This sucks. Yeah, there's no girls here. Yeah, I noticed. That's a bad party. Bunch of dudes. Got nothing to talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unless you're into that sort of thing. Bunch of guys just look at each other all night. Did you watch the game? Hi. Yes. Did you? Yes. Want to go get some girls? Yes. <laughs> yes, let's do that, because this sucks. In America, we have a name for this kind of party. We call it a sausage fest. And you know you're at a bad party when it's a bunch of dudes going, this is a sausage fest. 
You don't hear girls saying, this is a taco buffet. <laughs> this party needs more sausage. <laughs> what a clam bake. <laughs> they never say that because girls know how to come together as a group and have a great time. They'll spend half the night complimenting each other. You ever seen girls when they first get together? I like your shoes, I like your pants, I like your belt, I like your bag, I like your dress. You're so cute, you're so cute, you're so cute, you're so cute. Puss, puss, cough, cough. It never ends. It's like, I like your earrings. Oh, you like these earrings? I like how you like my earrings. You like how I like how you like my earrings? And they feel good. The self-esteem rises. Like, she likes me. I was like, girl, Lisa, come here. Girl, that blouse really shows off your boobs. <laughs> like, can you imagine those pants really show off your balls? <laughs> hey, buddy, penis looks great tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's female behavior, right? Guys, don't do that. This is how women bond, okay? You give each other compliments, and it feels good, and then everybody feels like they're part of the group, and everyone feels happy, and it's wonderful. Until one of them walks away, then they talk shit about her. <laughs> right? Oh my God, did you see what that whore was wearing? What a slut. <laughs> oh, she's coming back. Hi, Lisa. You're so cute. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah, it's true. You don't do that to your friends? Yeah, but you're the one that I talk about when you walk away. That's why she doesn't know about it. She's waiting for her, she walks out, who the fuck does she think she is? That never happens in my girlfriends. <laughs> Until you go to the bathroom. <laughs> Just kidding. It's okay, you're married. It's okay. Americans are allowed to have misconceptions about Sweden. She thinks I'm in the 60s. Yeah. 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 We all are. All Americans are. Well, it's very 2013 if you make a gross generalization about an entire fucking country. <laughs> That's not 60s at all. Ironic. Yeah. Can you um, inform your friend that she's at a comedy club? <laughs> she seems a little confused about where she is right now. She's like, I can't wait to go hear the lecture about feminism tonight. <laughs> oh shit, he's talking about women. I'm getting uncomfortable. I love Sweden. You are my first Swedish heckler. Four years. Four years. I have never had someone in the audience interrupt my show like that. So you just ruined one of my Swedish stereotypes, which is that you're all so polite. <laughs> so there you go. I don't think that. <laughs> when I started doing comedy about 10 years ago, I'll never forget the headliner uh, was Lewis Black. Do you guys know him? Yeah. He told Lewis Black told me 10 years ago, he said, one thing you will never be able to do no matter where you go if you're performing comedy, it is impossible to get a drunk woman quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we found out tonight it's even true in Stockholm. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop picking on you if you will stop picking on me. I will. I will eat your jelly bean after the show. Um, you're sweet and funny. Thank you. <laughs> You're loud and irritating, don't worry. <laughs> Usually the rules are the one with the microphone talks and everybody else says ha ha. <laughs> this is different. I don't want to break any, you know, rules of etiquette. I realize I'm a stranger in a strange land. They're going to change my nickname tonight. A lot of people in Sweden call me the polite American. <laughs> I think it's going to change after this show. But you know, I never really knew how to take that because like when I saw that they started calling me that like in magazines and stuff, I was like, I don't know if this is a compliment for me or more just an insult to all the other Americans who performed here first. <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy, he's kind of nice. He's the polite one. <laughs> But I do love traveling, I really do, you know. I love like when you get on the plane, you get excited, you're going somewhere. But then as soon as they start the engine, I always remember the time when the pilot flew the plane into the Hudson River. You guys remember that story? 
Did you know everybody who was on that plane got $10,000? Now when I get on a plane, I'm like, come on, Hudson River. <laughs> funny, you know, that would be cool. Pilot's like, we landed safely in Stockholm. I said, damn it! I wanted to go for a swing. <laughs> Some of you remember the story, right? Remember what caused the trouble? It was geese, okay? Geese were flying into the engine. I didn't even know geese could be terrorists. <laughs> the worst part, they were Canadian. <laughs> Which is really, you know, I thought Canada was our friendly neighbors, but no, they hate our way of life. And they sent their geese <laughs> to attack our planes. Geese suicide bombers. It's a serious problem. It changed airport security. Now in America, when you go through security, they ask you more questions. Like, do you have any liquids? Do you have any weapons? Do you have feathers? <laughs> like, no, I don't have feathers, okay? One guy had feathers, now we all have to take off our shoes. <laughs> But uh, traveling's great. I like uh, Australia. I went to Australia in the wintertime. Unbelievable. You guys ever been? Man, you gotta go to Australia. All these are the coolest people in the world. They're like British people with better teeth. It's, really, it's an incredible country. They're so cool. And they make things sound cute even if they're not cute. You know? But they don't call it football. They call it footy. <laughs> They say brekkie. <laughs> Girls don't have boobs, they have titties. <laughs> Actually, that's what we say in America. I got confused for <laughs> But yeah, it's a great country, but whenever Hollywood has a script and they need like a really tough, like manly man, like a kind of guy, they always get him from Australia. I take that personally, you know? It's like they're trying to say they don't think any American guys are tough. You know? I'm tough. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Unless you stand up to me, then I would run. I'm not stupid. But it's true, Australian guys, they're very good at fighting. They learn from when they're children. They practice on kangaroos. <laughs> but yeah, I went to Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Really strange city, okay? Right outside my hotel room, there was a store. It was called Condoms To Go. <laughs> What, like somebody walked in? Hi, these are for here. <laughs> yeah, hurry up. Come on, this is urgent. We can't wait till we get home. Condoms to go. It made me think, maybe it used to be the condom store. And then they had to change the name. <laughs> After the incident. <laughs> Something happened. And they're like, you know what? We should be more specific. <laughs> this store is takeout only. <laughs> Clean up in aisle six. You're explaining that joke to each other. It's okay. You make a mess, you clean it up. It's a good rule. A good rule. I, uh, I do like traveling. Uh, it's really fun. I always love going back home though because New York's a great city. You guys been? Anybody? Yeah. New York? It's great, right? It's a great place to visit. It's hard living there. Like We have to deal with things. Like I went on a date. Something happened that would only happen in New York. Okay. A homeless guy tried to pick up my date. And here's the thing, he had really good pickup lines. So that was hard to deal with, because he came right up to my girl. He's like, you want to get married? He's like, I got food stamps and a big dick. Yeah, that upset me. Because I can't compete with that. I don't have food stamps. I take things literally. Even the word literally, right? There's a reason why we have that word. You're supposed to mean what you said. This girl was like, that movie literally scared me to death. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> That's a cool trick. Do it again. No one did that for like 2,000 years. <laughs> Happy Easter. I listen, you know. Like, my friend was in a bad mood. He said, whoever doesn't like me, they can suck it. <laughs> That's what he said. He's like, anyone who doesn't like me can suck it. I said, okay, but I don't think that they will. <laughs> it's hard enough to get people who do like you to do that. Good luck with someone who doesn't like you. Right? You never see someone like, I hate you. Take your pants off. I'll teach you a lesson. 
<laughs> so that's not how lessons get learned. Something's gonna be lost. Uh, translation. But I do. I listen when people talk, and a lot of times people don't realize what they're saying. You know, let's be honest. Like I'm colorblind, okay? And the first thing people say, like, oh, you're colorblind. What color is this? <laughs> okay, I literally just told you I'm colorblind. <laughs> you go up to blind people and say, hey. How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> you ask a deaf guy, can you hear me now? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Some people try to teach me. They'll be like, this is red. <laughs> and this is green. <laughs> I'm like, I'm cured. <laughs> hey, nobody ever explained it like that before. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? I'm colorblind, not color stupid. <laughs> they look the same, don't you get it? I was walking down the street on a date. First time I went out with this girl. And I tripped, the sidewalk was uneven, I tripped and fell. And she said, be careful. <laughs> I said, where were you three seconds ago? <laughs> Could have used that heads up, you know. I was like, what, what do you want me to do? I was like, I don't know, do you have a time machine? <laughs> Go back to basics. <laughs> people don't realize what they're saying, you know? I hate when people say, could be worse. You ever heard somebody say that? Hey, it could be worse. Yeah, it could always be worse. Yeah. I was in an elevator, a crowded elevator, stuck between the floors. And a guy next to me was like, hey, it could be worse. I was like, yeah, we could be on fire right now. That would be worse. We could fill up with water. That would be worse. There could be 10 of you. That would really be worse. <laughs> I don't like when somebody says, first of all, and then they don't tell you second, third, and fourth of all. They leave you hanging. You ever have somebody do that to you? He's like, yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to see her again, because first of all, she's not my type. I'm like, come on, I'm finished. He's like, no, I'm finished. That's all. I'm like, that can't be all. You said, first of all, you got to have more. It's like, now my A, B, one, two. He's like, no, that's all there is. I said, well, that's really unusual. That's cruel and unusual punishment. That's like going, bop, ba da dum. <laughs> Shouldn't do that to people, Jerry. Bum, bum. Okay, we did that. Much better. You guys are a good crowd. We appreciate you coming out tonight. We tried it once without you. That was hard, so thanks for being here. It's a thin line between a comedy show and a skinny white guy talking to himself. <laughs> do it without the crowd and uh you know in new york we get some really like people don't know how to drink like swedes can drink i can never drink with swedes you guys can drink you guys can drink so much and still be good like we had a guy in the show last weekend he was so drunk he was heck he wasn't really heckling okay he was just yelling out adjectives <laughs> like that's hard for me to deal with i'm trying to do a joke this guy's like large <laughs> okay uh Try to ignore him, continue the joke, he's like, large. I'm like, dude, you gonna buy me a sweater? That's the right size. I wear large. He was drunk, he didn't know he was at a comedy show. He thought we were doing mad libs. Like, I know a good adjective, I'm gonna help you with that. Ever lose something? Somebody's trying to help you find it? But all they really do is get on your nerves? <laughs> so you can't find your keys, huh? <laughs> Where'd you have them last? <laughs> Doesn't he know I would go to that place? <laughs> He's like, where were you when you lost them? <laughs> I don't know, that's what lost means. <laughs> means I don't know where I lost them. <laughs> I found the keys. He's like, it's always the last place that you look. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I found the keys. Why would I keep looking? <laughs> no, wait, hold on. Let me check one more place. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Never know. Gotta pay attention. I love my family. My mother's a professional poker player, you guys. Yeah, cool, right? You guys know what that was like for me growing up? Ever try to lie to a poker player? <laughs> it's not easy. I was 15 years old. She said, Clayton, did you drink my wine? I was like, no. She said, I call. I'm like, 
like, yeah, I drank the wine. She's like, I can read you like a book. She loves that song, Poker Face. You know that song, Lady Gaga? My mother loves that song. She made it her ringtone for her cell phone. I don't want to tell her what it's about. That song's about a girl who's having sex with a guy, but she's thinking about a girl. No boy wants mommy here every time the phone rings. I try to steer her in another direction. Mom, you know what song I like? The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. When to hold him, when to fold him. No bisexuality. She's like, bluffing with my muffin. Bluffing with my muffin. Oh, God, no. Mom, please. No muffin. And my dad's a jazz musician. This is my life. I got a jazz musician for a dad, a poker player for a mom. I had the only two parents at the school meeting wearing sunglasses. <laughs> it's kind of unusual. I love my family. My grandmother, 89 years old. She's Italian. 89 year old lady. I was playing her piano, right? And she said, honey, that's a beautiful song. You should send it in. I thought how nice it must be to be an 89 year old Italian woman and have no idea how the world works. <laughs> she thinks I can just send it in. She's like, yeah, send it in. They're going to play it on the radio. <laughs> if I could send it in, I wouldn't be working at the free comedy club. <laughs> but it's good, you know. It's good to have good family. Like my, my uncle, every Italian family, there's always one person in the family who's like 165% Italian. He's the uncle. When you shake his hand, there's a $20 bill in it. <laughs> Don't tell your father. It's between us. <laughs> yeah. I asked him one time, I was on tour, and it was Mother's Day. I asked him to send my mother some flowers for me, and I would take care of it when I got home. He called me up two days later. He's like, hey, kid, I took care of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? He's like, you know, the thing. I took care of that thing. You asked me. I was like, oh, the flowers? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's azaleas, all right? We didn't whack Joey Knuckles. We're not in the Sopranos yet, Uncle Jimmy. My family's very colorful. My brother Rob was born on my first birthday. That sucks. We had one party for two brothers. It was horrible. You know, we have like a Star Wars cake on a Dukes of Hazard tablecloth. I'm like, what is this? We gotta pick a theme. You know that one, you got the reference. Thanks, can you explain it to the other 50 people? <laughs> <laughs> you know, do some hats. Yeehaw! <laughs> Ruins a song, too. They'd be like, Happy birthday, dear Clayton and Robbie. <laughs> no, 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 screw Robbie. Get him out of my song. I asked for Legos, I got a brother. <laughs> Sometimes people are surprised when I tell them. You know? It's so like, wow, you have the same birthday. Wow, man, what are the odds of that? I'm like 364 to one. Those are the odds. I told you I took things literally. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh yeah, well see, there's always one person that thinks outside the box, like, what if it was a leap year? But the thing is, I wasn't born February 29th. So it's roughly 364 to 1. Any other questions? <laughs> I like you guys. Nice interactive audience. We appreciate it. I've had some strange audiences, really. I did. I had a show. Well, I did a show with Eddie Murphy in, uh, in Texas, which was incredible. I learned so much. Yeah, it was amazing. One thing I learned is that 500 black people don't think I'm funny. <laughs> Which helps you understand why I come back to Sweden. Here there's only two black people and they work here, so... Everybody else understands that. I did a show for a prom. You know, they have something in school uh, after prom party. So kids are, you know, after they, after they finish the school dance and they lock them in the gymnasium. And they have DJs and comedians and food and everything. Keep them there all night so they don't have sex. <laughs> and they hired me to entertain them. But when I got there, the school was closed. Like they moved the party and didn't tell the comedian. I called the police. I did. I said, hi, I'm Clayton Fletcher, a 36-year-old white man from New York. Where are the kids? <laughs> and they took me to them. They sent me a police escort right this way, sir. 
enjoy the prom. Uh, don't you want to see my ID? He's like, no, it's okay. You look fine. You're all right. But that's not the youngest audience I performed for. I did a show in Pennsylvania for a room full of students in year five. That was the youngest audience. So many kids. And after the show, all the little kids found me on the internet. And they wanted to be my friends. I thought that was pretty cute, really, you know. Now I worry what people think when they go to my Facebook page. And they see most of my friends are ten-year-old boys. That's not good. I told that story last night. Guy in the front was like, weren't any of them girls? What freaking difference does that make? I asked him, I was like, why are you asking me that, sir? What, like he thinks I'm less of a pervert if some of my friends are ten-year-old girls? <laughs> yeah, sure, that's okay. He's a pedophile, but at least he's not gay. <laughs> yeah, no, I knew it. It's okay. <laughs> Just in case you miss any part of the joke, I want you to know I'm not either of those things. I don't want you guys to leave to good night like, that pedophile guy was hilarious. <laughs> You're going home, that child molester was very funny. What was his name again? <laughs> so yeah, I'd love if you guys would visit my website, ClaytonFletcher.com. Follow me on Twitter, and if you have Finest, I have a blog, Polite American, so please read that. Yeah. But most of all, I hope you guys will please, um, you know, check out my Facebook page, and you know, I'm trying to increase the adult-to-child ratio. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you for coming out. My name is Yemi Alpha Lobby. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Cheers, peace.